Hey, what is going on everybody out there? This is Jake James Lugo. Welcome to the channel and welcome to a brand new episode of Definitive Discussion Rebooted where I have on all types of guests from all throughout the internet, gaming, YouTube, a whole bunch of different places. We bring them on to talk about a bunch of cool stuff. If you guys haven't checked out the previous episodes and checked out all the fun guests that I've had on the show, you guys definitely need to do so. There's a playlist link in the description box below. I'm pretty sure you guys will get a kick out of all the cool people that we've had on the show. But today, we got another cool guest. We got Katya Steck, fellow actress, YouTuber, does a whole bunch of stuff she's out here putting in work doing some <laughs> crazy stuff and it's funny enough we connected over twitter randomly yep. because we have mutual friends in youtube and and like voice actors and actresses and stuff and it was kind of cool because we had a fun comment. i was like you know what let's make this into a podcast let's yep. let's give it to the people it just, stuff but it's it awesome. just happened it just happened randomly it's like hey let's just do this <laughs> exactly so okay yeah welcome Appreciate Welcome you coming me, yes. on to the show. It's pretty cool stuff. But it's funny, the combo that we were having was originally started off about sci-fi. We talked mm -hmm. a little bit about like how sci-fi, in, in our personal opinions, you know, being longtime fans of different sci-fi shows yep. and movies and stuff, has becoming a little bit more darker than it's Straight. become like hopeful and stuff. And you're very passionate about that, which is great. Oh, yeah. You know, because this is this is gonna be a fun deep dive into it. So what oh, yeah. is it about sci-fi that's been bugging you? What's your beef right now? What's right that? now, I'm literally just so mad because everything if you look at how everything is instead of focusing on like what you were saying on twitter is like the wonder and fun which yeah. was a lot of the older shows and the movies it was all about like that wonder and fun that like got you back into the show got you back into the movies and nowadays it's all about everybody being edgelords everybody yeah. has to be edgelords about the grittiness about the darkness and it's like instead of focusing on certain topics like this we could literally dive into the fun and the quirkiness of these characters and avoid the darkness altogether. I mean, yeah. I don't I don't have that much against like darkness altogether, but like when it comes to adding the quirkiness and the colorfulness and the wonder, that's really important. Because if you don't yeah. have that, then it's just going to be drama. And we get enough of that in newspapers nowadays. We get enough of that with politics. There's a time <laughs> and place for it. Like for me, yeah. I think the perfect example that I brought up in our Twitter convo mm -hmm. is Star Trek. Now, yep. obviously, a lot of people that if you've been following me for a while, you guys know I'm a little bit of a Trek fan. I'm a TNG guy. And I've been following that series for a while. But what makes it such a perfect example is because we have new series with it. We got Star Trek Discovery. We mm -hmm. have the J.J. Abrams movies or that series, which is called the Kelvin timeline. So it gets very complicated. Yeah. People, so bear with me. But basically... <laughs> That whole series, it originally with Gene Roddenberry, was a very hopeful take on what humanity could be over time. Again, it's a very old school approach to sci-fi with a little bit of Western mixed into it for the fun and stuff. But it was always about uplifting human beings. It was always about things are going to get better over time. Our future is looking bright. That was like the cornerstone of Star Trek. And then when I look at the new series, which mm -hmm. is Star Trek Discovery, which feels a little bit more like what the new Battlestar Galactica has been like. If you guys have never seen it before, if you're listening to this, Battlestar Galactica is a lot more of a gritty take on what sci-fi I can be which is cool and there's a time and place for that like there's a time and place oh, for yeah. Batman but there's also a time and place for Superman there's exactly. also a time and place for Wonder Woman and I feel like Hollywood now because the trend is that people are getting caught up on realness and what they're mistaking oh, realness time. for is grit and grit and like all this like dark interpretations of what mm -hmm. the world and what fantasy could be and we're losing that 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 whimsical take or at least that creative take on what fantasy could be which is much more of an uplifting attitude that's where I feel like things are kind of spiraling out of control specifically yeah for sci-fi though because mm -hmm. it's like the thing is too is like instead of people you were just saying like that whimsical wit it's like you can have great storytelling using comedy if you wanted to because if anything is just like if, if you have a character that's so overly dramatized and you get like filled with all these backstories and like these useless plots here and there they're just filled with drama and like everybody's getting killed off you know it's what's even worse too, though, which I think is a yeah. huge problem, though, is that I think that a lot of the writers of these shows and yeah. movies and stuff, they're getting caught up on more trying to put a message, or not really to put a message, but trying exactly. to shove a message down the audience's Yay. throat, as opposed That's to giving it to them. Like, this is the thing that I felt, with, again, going back to Star Trek, because it's mm -hmm. a perfect example of all mm -hmm. this. Roddenberry and a lot of the other team that did The Next Generation were putting messages and putting a lot of these, like, progressive types of stuff in their storytelling, but they wasn't trying to do where it shoves it and is obnoxious about it. Yeah. And I think that's a huge problem now, especially in Hollywood and a lot of big time movies and a big time TV series where the message is the cornerstone of what the storytelling should be. And it shouldn't be like that. It should be the characters and yep. the plot that should be the cornerstone of storytelling. I mean, where do you stand on that? I mean, I, for one, am all about like character driven stories. 
And the thing is, is I've seen so many people now. It's like, what I always say is they're edgy Tumblr, like, edgelords. Like, if you go on Tumblr and you see these, like, very negative They're trying to be provocative. Yeah! And it's like, instead of being, like, literally, like, yo, we're telling a story about positive people going through positive things and it's like having a happy ending where people can be uplifted, it's more like, okay, it's the real grittiness of the real world now and all of us are going through all this. And, you know, you want to have, my stand on this, is fiction and reality should always be separate from each other. Yeah. And the thing is, too, what you were mentioning Hollywood, but also with books. Like, yo, this happens a lot in young adult fiction. Now, a lot of people nowadays focus on, like, politics, adding that to, like, like you were saying, shoving it down people's throats. They add that to cartoons. They add that to, like, the YA fiction that I read nowadays. And instead of, like, keeping fiction and reality separate, they mix them. You know, well, here's, they... here's the funny thing, though. I think that, you know, while looking at it from that type of lens, I think mm-hmm. that it's obviously they should be separate where the harsh reality of like what's going on right now, like in yeah. the news and stuff, that is should be totally separate from our storytelling. But yep. there are instances where I feel like it blends in so together very mm-hmm. well where you're trying to teach people about certain stuff or trying to make a metaphor for something that's going on, which, for example, perfect, perfect example of this, because, again, we Stan Lee recently passed away. Yeah. His, his uh, take on the X-Men was an allegory or very uh, a lot of parallels to what was going on with racism, or at least mm-hmm. the civil rights movement, and obviously uh, Charles Xavier and Magneto was uh, Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. Like there, yep. there's certain things there that are real messages, that are real takes on real life, but they're still kind of presented in a way where it's fantasy and where it's actual storytelling that yep. doesn't kind of put it in your face. And I feel like the the best word to describe it is obnoxious. And I think mm-hmm. that's where we're losing a lot of writers, we're losing a lot of creative people yeah. where they're trying to be heard, but trying to put their message out there to be heard rather than trying to say something important. And I exactly. think that's a huge problem and i think that's where there's a huge disconnect between the audience and what they're trying to you know take in and stuff that's why there's a lot of backlash too yep yep and the thing is like god rest uh stan lee's soul and everything because he was a perfect like person where he would teach doing that stuff in the 60s i know and literally the way he did it it was so whimsical and quirky and fun because everyone said he was so young at heart and he was and more creators need to think like how he did because nowadays like you're saying it's shoving down people's throats it's literally like yo like instead of like saying hey here's a story i want to tell that will help people it's more like hey here's a story i want to tell so people will believe my point of view which is not cool which no. i think that you lose your message yep. very quickly and i think also you know in order for a message to be powerful obviously mm-hmm. people need to listen and i think people need to support it over time yep. and you, you might it might take a while for certain messages especially a lot of the great philosophers and the great people that were yeah. pioneers in certain stuff especially in hollywood they went through a lot of hardship and went through a lot of struggle yep. trying to get their messages out there and now we look better back on them with more rose tinted glasses over time mm. but i still feel like people want that especially now in the age of social media and and technology and stuff people want that instant gratification of being looked at as a yes. like whatever superior like thing whether it's a being or whether yep. it's someone that could be looked at as like taking the moral high ground and mm-hmm. I think that's very destructive because then that yeah. kills a lot of the stuff, which, again, a lot of these different things, a lot of people use the phrase SJW. A lot of people use the phrase, yeah. you know, sir, like, yeah. you know, again, I'm getting caught up on the terms and stuff, and a lot of them are crazy. But, like, mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff that people are trying to ride for are good messages, but I think that the approach and the methods are wrong. Exactly. Because the thing is, you can't force people to think a certain way. And exactly. it's, like, a lot of people have to be, like, impartial about everything because, like, especially, like, on social media, if you're a company and you have a strong different belief on something, you can't shove that down people's throats being, like, yo, you have to believe in the way I believe in because that's going to make your company look bad, you know? Like, you have to respect everyone's point of view instead of making everyone believe in what everyone, like, what you think everyone should believe in. True, true. And you know what's another good example of this to tie right back around? It's Star Wars. Obviously, yeah. new new Star Wars under the Disney rule. I, mm-hmm. I, guess, I should say Disney <laughs> rule, but the Disney era you know, of yeah. Star Wars, which is like all the new stars from Episode 7, Rogue mm-hmm. One, uh, Solo, and all the other upcoming movies and stuff. I feel like one of the things that a lot of people, a lot of fans, specifically longtime fans, really have a problem with the new Star Wars is that mm-hmm. because even though there were some messages that George Lucas had put back in those days with the New Hope, Empire, and Return of mm-hmm. the Jedi, they were still prevalent there but again they weren't obnoxious but they also weren't the driving force behind the storytelling they weren't the driving force behind those movies being made and I think a lot of that comes from the creative team and the people that are kind of getting injected into a lot of these projects but also I feel like it's a a real big trend chasing type of thing you see that obviously on social media you Mm -hmm. see that obviously within like the different types of sales and the stuff of people going to the movie theaters and stuff people now you know in the days of the Me Too movement and the days of like a lot of stuff going on now in our pop culture 
closer, that seems to be a thing that gets people in seats. But one mm-hmm. of the things I also noticed too at the same time, we see this with Marvel, Marvel Comics, and also a little bit of DC as well, is that that's not keeping people around. It's just mm-hmm. like that instant gratification. It's like lightning in the bottle or a flash yep. in a pan. And that doesn't seem to be keeping people around to sustain a lot of this stuff. Again, going back to Star Trek, you know, with Discovery. Discovery right now is on the verge of possibly getting canceled because a lot of people are very, very very, uh, adamant about how that show has progressed and stuff, as well as also a couple other things here and there. And you could say the same thing about Star Wars, even though Star Mm. Wars is a multi-billion dollar (laughs) brand (laughs) and stuff. I mean, where do you think that, you know, things that could be actually be changed or where can things actually be adjusted so that way a lot of this stuff could be, you know, changed for the better so that way we could get back to those better, more whimsical, more kind of uplifting stories told in both sci-fi or other stuff. You got to focus on the characters. Character-driven stories are what sell. Character-driven stories are what gets people attached to these stories. Because nowadays, like what you were just saying, it's all about the plot now. It's all about a message somebody is trying to say. And it's like, instead of focusing on that message, let let the characters tell that story. Let them improve. It's like even with um, gaming nowadays, there's so many games that focus on story now, which is a fantastic choice to do. But some of those stories, they need to like get away from the grittiness and focus on more of the colorfulness and the quirky and the whimsicalness because that is great storytelling right there. But you got to focus. You got to focus on the characters. I, I mean, agree. I, I think there's Star a time Wars, and place for yeah. it, though. It, when it comes to games specifically, there's a yeah. time and place for it. And I think that, you know, for us in gaming specifically, even though we're not as big as like a entertainment medium as like, you yeah. know, movies, television, music and stuff, I think that sometimes we get a little bit much more kind of like eocentric with a lot of that stuff. And we're, we're for whatever reason, we're the most loudest when it comes to mm-hmm. these types of issues. Yeah, I agree. Because like it's what makes me mad is I see how things are nowadays. It's like, don't say this message let the characters say that message you know like when you're playing a video game you know you're controlling that character you're letting them go into these scenarios and you you live through them you know you can relate to these characters and that's why gaming is like why i always say is the storytelling of the future gaming is totally the storytelling of the future because not only is there a story there but there's cinematography and also they they have great stories now but interactivity yeah you bond with these characters through controlling them now, let me ask you this, because you go back to characters, which I think is a huge, yeah. important thing that a lot of people tend to really overlook. And I think it's because a lot of the characters that we see getting pushed right now in various mm-hmm. places. Again, I go back to Star Trek. I go to Star Wars. I go to The Walking Dead, even. You yeah. can even say even House of Cards, which is a, a one that because of the controversy with uh, Kevin Spacey, mm-hmm. stuff, that changed up a lot of stuff. What is it that a lot of people are really having a backlash or a real like, you know, negative reaction to some of these characters? And I for me personally, I believe it's more because these characters are trying to be made to represent specific ideas that are made by the That's writing it. teams and the yep. creative teams as opposed to being a character that, mm-hmm. that ends up being real and, and kind of like has certain qualities that one can relate with. For example, again, Star Trek Discovery, um, my, I believe it's Michael Some I can't remember the last name, but the female character that's the main character of the entire series is named Michael, as opposed mm. to having a female name and stuff. And there's a lot of different things about her that some people will come on and throw the term around Mary Sue, which mm-hmm. I feel like is well that's overplayed. The I don't think I don't think too. I don't think people I don't think people really understand what a Mary Sue is and they yeah. kind of throw that around like other terms and stuff. But I can understand where that that frustration comes yeah. from where whether a character is way too good or mm-hmm. way too overpowerful or doing all these different things. Mm-hmm. Or doing things that kind of like takes a dump on like previous established yep. lore or canon stuff. Like where yeah. do you stand on that? When what when does it become too much about a particular character or characters that ends up messing up the storytelling? Okay, when you know how the writers are as human beings, if you follow them on social media, you see how they are. When you see how the producers are, and then you see how similar that their characters are to them. That's a Mary Sue right there. Because literally, when it, instead of being like, hey, you know. Let's make this character completely different and represent something completely different rather than my own personal views. They are literally making it about them. And it's it's very narcissistic in my opinion. You know, instead Do you find of- that there's an oversaturation of that? Because I know mm-hmm. I see this with movies, TVs, cartoons, games, cartoons. Car- comics. Like obviously there's been some big controversies with that, especially with like Marvel comics. I think mm-hmm. there was a couple different comic arcs that did that and stuff. Yeah. Where when does that become a problem? Because obviously we've seen other writers and creators project yeah. themselves into their stories and stuff, but when does that become like cross the line of becoming a problem? When they're preaching about it too much. That's what, in my opinion. When they literally are like, when again, when you see that how they are on social media and then you see exactly how their characters are acting kind of exactly like their tweets, that's when it becomes a problem because they become, the character becomes that person. And what I was saying, fiction and reality should be separate, but also when the writing team and the characters should be separate entities right there. Like they should be completely separate from each other. Hmm. 
I see what you mean. But but yeah. I'm also curious to know also is that is it also kind of like on the responsibility of like some of the studios and like the heads that are like overseeing a lot of these creative projects and stuff to rein that in? Because we see a lot of different mm. studios that, you know, let people do what they're going to do, because obviously there's the reaction from the fans yeah. that, you know, getting the publicity. There's the sales, you know, the people buying the tickets to go see these movies and stuff mm. or buying the books or watching the stuff on TV and such. Whose responsibility is it to kind of like monitor that type, that type of stuff or to speak up? Because obviously we get people on online and various social media talking about these things like obviously mm. us talking about this stuff yeah, but other fans. people being very vocal about that but whose responsibility is it ultimately to kind of watch over that type of thing honestly it's a, in my opinion it's a studio because they should be listening to the fans if the fans are saying this is wrong they should be like okay let's work around with this you know the studio is the production team like even on my own youtube channel it's like i'm the head of production so i always make sure everything is produced in a certain way and that we listen to what our fans have to say like they want this certain content more than this content okay we're going to give them more of that but with studios what they need to be listening to more is their fans the fans are what are the people that make the product sell the fans are what the people that make the movie sell on the shows and this and that and keep everything on tv so with with studios got to listen to their fans great like a, a great example is and going back to gaming toys for bob who created spyro the, yeah the great remake. game i'm reviewing that Fantas- now great game oh my god like spyro is my childhood that is that he was my childhood <laughs> hero i could go on for hours talk about spyro but how they how toys for bob did it if you follow their entire journey until they release the game they listened to their fans and why this game is doing so well is because they listen to their fans. Like, like people are saying there's glitches here and there, but you know, a patch can fix that. They can make updates. And that's what's great because instead of saying, we're going to take this into our own hands and produce it, they were like, okay, guys, what do you think about this level? Like, they, they released something, so we would be happy about that. And I think that more like movie studios, even like even with books and everything, they can learn from, from gaming studios to be, be interactive with their fans. And get them more involved with the production. I see. So let me play devil's advocate for a second uh-huh. then because, you know, there's a lot of nuance like points to this, you know, yeah. and I think a lot of people glance over them or again outright ignore them. You mm. know, sometimes obviously I think the, the biggest point being is that studios are gonna do what they're gonna do. It's their yeah. projects, they're the ones putting it out there. And exactly. at the end of the day, it's either you could buy in or not. Yeah. But what do you think about studios or teams or even just some of the creative people that are like making some of these things? What is it that you think about when it comes to like this animosity between them? Because obviously with the backlash and the feedback that some mm-hmm. people uh, kind of put out there and stuff, obviously a lot of the big things in the gaming news with Diablo Immortal, yeah. a lot of stuff going on with Fallout 76, you could argue stuff with like Mass Effect uh, 3 or Mass Effect and Drive. Andromeda, you know, mm. for gaming stuff, but even in entertainment, Star Wars, Star Trek, a lot of stuff with The Walking Dead, or even you could even throw in there some stuff going on with this new She-Ra reboot that's going on with oh, Netflix yeah. right now. That, that was a huge thing not too long ago, and that just came out recently and stuff. Yep. What is it that, that is really a big problem, however, when it comes to the studios and the fans being at odds with each other? Like, do you think that the studios should know better, or the studios should take a step back and actually yeah. try to cater to the fans in that regard? Or is it? do you think it's acceptable to have that push back and forth between the two? I think that studios should be more open, like open-minded to what the fans have to say, but also respect their own production. But I think the big problem is, again, going back to politics, it's like studios are now, everything has to be like politically correct here and there. And instead of focusing on the craft, they're focusing on the politics of the craft. And the studios should be like, hey, even if they're like a small studio and they have a lot of fans, be like, okay, what do you guys think of this? Instead of literally going behind, it's kind of in a way, fans feel betrayed. Especially with all the reboots that are coming on, like with Netflix, a lot of fans feel kind of betrayed that they're taking like like 80s cartoons and rebooting them into something that, what you were saying, like SJW stuff. And instead of saying like, hey, you know, let's see what the fans have to say about this. People are literally going against the odds and being like, hey, you know, let's just let's just shove this down people's throats right now and make sure that they like this because this is what we're doing. And I don't care if they don't like it through and through. You know what I think of the problem is, though, I think, too, is that specific people, like, for for example, like, some of the people that were at Marvel that were working on, like, Star Wars books and stuff. I I forgot the guy's name, but he was big in the news because he lost his job after, like, this tirade that he did on Twitter and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's more those specific individuals, not necessarily the studios, but I think it's the individuals that they bring on board are the ones that are kind of taking this mightier than thou or Mm -hmm. holier than thou attitude with fans. Yeah, exactly. I think that's a huge problem. I think you see that, obviously, with Star Wars. Mm -hmm. I think you see that with gaming specifically, especially Mm -hmm. now with some of the news i think that's a big problem because i don't think it's right 
to condescend the fans as a whole and paint a very yeah. broad brush because let's let's be real for a second. I mean, we're all adults. We can understand that there's certain groups of people out there that are just not cool, that they're, they're yeah. quote unquote bigoted in the sense where mm-hmm. they say and do different things. And I don't even think they ride for those causes. I think they're just trying to get a reaction exactly. from people over Twitter. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't think it's okay to associate the entire lot with that. Like, no. for example, Star Wars fans are constantly, because of like how they express they feel about some of the movies yeah. and stuff, they get bundled up with a lot of other people that they throw around these terms like, you know, misogynist, white mm-hmm. supremacist, uh, anti-women, and all this other crazy stuff that I think people take more offense at that yeah. than anything else going on with the actual project stuff. Like, do you think that's a bigger problem, though? That's, me, a, it is. Hu- that's a huge issue. Because, you know, like, this is what I was saying, like, in one of the interviews that I had. It's like, we as geek culture fans we used to be looked at as the underdogs you know we were kind of like underground in a sense everyone would mock us like oh my god you like star wars oh my god you like marvel what's wrong with you You like anime you like manga what is wrong with you so we were always underground but now everything is becoming so mainstream and everyone's like oh we're into dungeons and dragons we're into larping we're into this now like it's the in thing it's the in thing it's the trend and instead of everybody being like comfortable with each other and saying, hey, you know, we went through a lot to get where we are today. Everybody is having this huge separation. Everybody is attacking each other. And it's like, instead of going back and realizing that we were the underdogs and we were the misfits of the world, there are cliques now within our own communities. It's high school all over again within the geek culture community. Instead of us supporting each other, it's all about, hey, if you don't believe in this rights or that rights or adding politics or especially when you get politics involved with anything, you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose people who care about you. It becomes very and vicious and, and like vicious. anti-friendly. Yeah, and it's like people – On Twitter especially, instead of arguing with each other, realize that we were the misfits and the underdogs of the world, and now there's a huge separation. There's a huge separation, and now we're all attacking each other. And it needs needs to stop because, hey, you know, it's like, yeah, this is mainstream now, but we're lucky that it is. It's lucky that we're having trends and that Forever 21 is selling some anime stuff. Like, we're lucky that this is happening. And it's like... Instead of looking at it like that, people look at it like, oh my god, you don't have my point of view of things. I'm going to have a total different discussion. You're not my friend anymore. Okay, let's make this about politics. And it's it's toxic. It's tw- Twitter. Twitter is extremely toxic with those things. That's why it's great to have conversations like this because usually it's about... <laughs> You know, positivity here and like having our own views on this and having like, you know, finding a positive tweet every now and then is very rare on the platform. I agree. And I think it's also a better way for obviously for disagreements. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't always work with people. But I think also it's a better way of keep progressing forward with with that type of conversation to make things better. We're all on common ground with what we love, which which I think is important. I think a lot of people tend to forget that type Mm -hmm. of stuff, which is like super important. But Kaya... Thank you for coming on to the show. We're going to end off the convo right here, but we're going to continue talking, me and you, because okay. we're going to do an episode of EX Mode for everybody over on Patreon. Guys, if you like this discussion right now here on Definitive Discussion Rebooted, make sure you let me know in the comment section down below. Tell me about some of the, any of the, or pretty much any of the points that we touched on, because we touched on a lot, yeah. like all over the place. Because <laughs> we, we started off sci-fi and then we talked about, obviously, you know, the, the interpretations and representation of Hollywood and all this other like crazy stuff going on. So put it in the comment section down below. Of course, don't forget to leave a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel as well. Kaya, where can they find you right now? Because you're on YouTube, you're on Twitter, you're on Instagram, you're all over the place, right? All like, where the can place. they find you? <laughs> so, uh, Miss Cat Squad is on YouTube. Um, I also have my personal Twitter, which is Conscious Deck VA. And then the Twitter for Miss Cat Squad is at Miss Cat Squad, obviously. And then Instagram is at Miss Cat Squad. So, we also have a Discord server and a Patreon page. So, be sure to check that out. Pretty dope, pretty dope. Yeah, there's going to be links to all that stuff in the description box below, guys, so you guys can go directly, check it out. Send her a bunch of owl hugs. Send her a little <laughs> bit more owl hugs. That's what we do over here. We send oh, owl hugs, everybody. We, 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 I got this affinity for owls, so anybody that follows my content knows that, so we always goof around with, with owls and stuff. But either way, we'll be back in just a bit with another episode of EXMO so we can continue our conversation. But thank you guys for listening to this episode of Definitive Discussion Rebooted. We will talk to you again very soon. Peace out, and stay epic, everybody. <laughs>